Okay, well, thanks very much, Charles. Uh, it's really a great honor to have this opportunity to speak uh, to you about my research. And I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about unemployment in the Great Recession. I should note that uh, this research that I'm going to present draws heavily on the work I've been doing with Alan Krieger, who is at the Council of Economic Advisors and also Princeton University. And the usual, usual disclaimer uh, applies that, you know, everything I say here is really refl reflecting my own opinion and not his. So what I'm talking about uh, today, um, so this is the U.S. unemployment rate over the last uh, 30, 40 years, uh, from 1976 to 2013, and I'll just show that as a motivational slide. And the one point I want to make here is that, you know, if you compare how the unemployment rate has evolved in previous recessions to the, to the current one, so in the current recession, so a tremendous increase in unemployment rate of around from 4.5% uh, to uh, around 10%. If you look back in time, um, some of the recessions were associated with less increase in unemployment, but for example, the 1980s recession was also associated with a big increase in unemployment rate. And so what, what is special about recession, another thing you can see from this slide is somehow the recovery seems to be a little slower. So unemployment doesn't seem to come down quite as fast as in the 1980s recession where it spiked up and then went down again. Uh, so I thought I'd show you another graph which I think is really striking and shows some of the differences uh, in which this recession, this recent recession, has been different from previous recessions. So what I'm showing you here is the average duration of unemployment in weeks, so how long an, employment, uh, an un unemployed worker expects to be unemployed before he, finds a, he or she finds a job, and there's some tremendous differences. So it kind of fluctuates between 10 and 20 weeks uh, in previous recessions, and in the more recent recession, it went from 15 to around 40 weeks of unemployment. So there's a tremendous increase, unemployed workers have been unemployed for a very long time. It is, is you know, leading to a, a, a rising long-term unemployment. And you know, some people obviously find jobs faster, but there are also a lot of people that haven't found a job for three or four years. So this is really unprecedented. And you know, the question arises, what are these people going to do? So in terms of what explains the recent large increase in employment, so I just thought I'll talk uh, a minute about that. So there's been some research trying to explain, well, why did we have this increase, this large increase in, in unemployment? And there are lots of factors. Some say, well, it's the demand side factors. Uh, somehow maybe there was, a, because of the large decline in wealth, there's a lot of deleveraging going on, people consuming less. So aggregate, aggregate demand is lower. Therefore, also uh, firms are hiring fewer people. Some people have also talked about, uh, to what extent, the recent increase in the generosity of unemployment insurance. So unemployment benefits went from 26 weeks to 99 weeks in some states. Might, might have also contributed to the rise in unemployment, though some research suggests that actually that has been a minor factor. Some also cite structural factors to the extent, so mismatch is often a catchphrase, uh, to the extent like our workers, uh, the skills that workers have currently, do they really match the skills that are demanded by companies and is there a mismatch? Again, I think some research suggests that that actually is not that important in explaining the rise in unemployment. And finally, there's also some research that looked at to what extent financial constraints, so the foreign constraints at the firm level have led to increase in employment. Uh, some people have looked at uh, firms, the, um, sort of their banking relationships, so firms that had uh, banking re relationships with bad banks, to what extent those, those uh, firms um, were firing more people in the recent recession than other banks. So I would say that's kind of uh, what people have been doing research on. My personal view is that probably demand set factors have been a bit more important in explaining the rise in unemployment. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, I think what, I'm, what I want to emphasize here is there has been a large increase in unemployment, and there's also been a relatively weak recovery. So for example, if you look at uh, how fast GDP has been growing since uh, the start of the recovery in June 2009, the average uh, GDP growth has been just 2.2%, which is well below trend growth, which is around uh, 3%. So the question that I'm trying to uh, answer here is, could this lead to what I would call hysteresis. So uh, because somehow the demand side, uh, you know, maybe firms were not hiring enough, so unemployed workers have been out of work for a really long time, could that itself like work, uh, lead workers to become discouraged? And uh, could that lead to workers losing their skills and therefore lead to uh, a, a, a higher unemployment rate in the future? Not just in the next years, but over, over many, many years. And so the question is, are these people getting discouraged that have been unemployed for so long? And I think that's a really hard answer to, to a really hard question to answer. Uh, and 
I just want to look at, so one, one way people think about that, so often people look at graphs like this, so this is not from my research, but uh, just from another paper. And what this plots here is the monthly job finding rate by duration of unemployment. So here we look at people that have been unemployed zero to four weeks, and here we look at people that have been unemployed for almost two years. And you can see that people that have been unemployed for zero to four weeks, they uh, have a much higher probability of finding a job than those that have been unemployed for, for, uh, for over two, for two years. So the question is, does this, uh, does, is this evidence in favor of discouragement? People getting discouraged to search less the longer they're unemployed? No, some people say that's, it's, it's less clear because it could be that people that find jobs here, they're fundamentally different than people that are unemployed here. So you can think of two types of workers. Maybe there's a, a high a high type that is very effective in searching is a high ability worker. He finds jobs very fast, and so if the low types, you know, they're, they're, they're here, they fail to find jobs, they're just intrinsically different, they don't, they don't get discouraged, but uh, they're just of a different type. So there's, there's, a, there's this tension, or there's this problem in this literature. Um, it's really hard to infer from job finding uh, from this graph whether it's true discouragement or, there, or where there are different, uh, whether there are different types of unemployed workers that could sort of lead to that kind of picture. So the key idea that we had is, well, what you need to do is to collect new survey data. In particular, if you were to track unemployed workers over the spell of unemployment and collect repeated information for the same unemployed worker, then you could really track, on, uh, you could really track how job search intensity, uh, how uh, that evolves over the unemployed over the unemployment spell for a given worker. And that's what we tried to do. So we collected a new novel data set. It's a panel data set on job search intensity. I'll talk more about how we measure that, job search intensity. And uh, I'm a little ashamed to call this high frequency data here at the Program of Financial Studies, but in labor studies, this is really high frequency if you collect data at the weekly level. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, the way we designed the survey, we worked together with the New Jersey Unemployment Office, which gave us a list of all unemployed workers at a given moment in time. And then we, we, we sampled, a, we, we drew a, a stratified random sample. So we select, so I'm just showing these details because it's important for understanding a graph that I'm gonna show you later. So we, look, we, we sampled individuals uh, according to how long they've already been unemployed. So we looked at people that were unemployed in the, at the beginning of the survey, zero to two weeks. Another group was 10 to 12 weeks. Another group was 20 to 22 and so on until 70 to 79. So I have eight different groups uh, according to how long they've already been unemployed. So it was a web survey. We, in the beginning, we asked them some questions about their background, their demographics and so on. Uh, we did survey them for 12 consecutive weeks and they had to report their search intensity and also ask other questions. Another question we asked was about what we call the reservation wage. And then actually we decided in the end to extend it for an additional 12 weeks uh, for the long-term unemployed. So this is how it started. So we did interviewing from mid-October to uh, beginning of January of 2010, and then additional 12 weeks for the long-term unemployed. Somewhat unfortunate, in the midst of the survey, there was an extension of unemployment insurance because one of the ideas we also wanted to address is what happens when people exhaust their unemployment insurance. Um, obviously, we didn't have that many people after that because the, uh, unemployment insurance was extended by an additional 20 weeks. So we didn't really have that many. In any case, how do we measure uh, search intensity? So the way that this draws also some, on, on some early work we have been doing, one way of measuring search intensity is collecting a time diary. Uh, because if you ask workers directly how long have you been searching for a job during the last week or the last month, people might over-report their search. And if you <coughs> just give them a time diary and tell them, well, tell me how did you spend the, uh, the previous day, maybe that's less of an issue. So the way that this time diary worked was that people had to fill the day, had to select two activities for every hour from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. And one of the activities was searching for a job, but you know, this should be kind of a representative list of what people are doing over the course of a normal, normal day. Uh, we also did ask them this seven-day recall question where we asked them specifically, what did you do? How did you search? Uh, what kind of methods and how long you searched uh, for a given method? So that is a kind of a, a check on this other measure. And finally, also this, this question about the reservation wage, which I mentioned, which kind of tries to get at the question, what type of jobs do workers accept? And what is kind of the lowest, uh, the lowest wage job that people would be willing to accept? 
and then we can track to what extent people actually change that over the spell of unemployment or not. So this is uh, the measure of search intensity, uh, the first one that comes from the time diary, so minutes per day that unemployed workers search over the spell of unemployment. So remember I told you about these uh, eight different groups depending on how, how long they've been unemployed at the beginning uh, when we started the survey. So this is the first group at zero. So we followed them for 12 weeks. It looks like it's uh, sharply decreasing. The same is true here for those 10 to 12. Same is true here for this group. For any group, actually, search intensity appears to strongly decrease or spell of unemployment. In terms of minutes, uh, you know, how much do these workers search on a given day? Uh, it starts around 110 minutes and goes down to you know, about uh, 60 or 50 minutes. So it's a relatively strong decline. If you look at the other measure of search intensity where we ask people directly uh, what kind of methods they searched in and how long they <laughs> searched in a given method, you see the very same patterns, uh, these parallel uh, downshifting lines. You can also look at, so we did have some people that exhausted unemployment benefits. So you can look at to what extent search intensity changes around that point when you uh, finish your unemployment benefits. We don't see any particular pattern. It just seems to be kind of linearly decre decreasing. We can also, you know, can estimate some regression. So you find basically the same pattern. I think that the main question here that, um, that this graph evokes is, well, is it really that people search less or um, could there be something else? Because the question you want to ask here, why do these lines not connect? So you would think, well, if, uh, if search is decreasing, you should actually observe that the lines connect. And there are two answers to this question. So one answer is that actually these this, this groups that we selected here turn, turned out to be very different in terms of industries and, uh, and previous wages because it turned out we selected people that were, became unemployed at a very given moment in time. So it might just be that one factory in New Jersey went bust and we kind of, we kind of selected all those workers in a given group. So there's some heterogeneity. Another uh, uh, answer would be, is there reporting bias? It could be that somehow workers, uh, they become more familiar with the survey and as the survey progresses, they just, they just want to save time and try to uh, just say, I haven't been searching uh, to, to save time. So obviously that's, uh, that's one thing we have to address. And one answer to that is, first of all, the diary, I think it's relatively hard to fake. And you don't necessarily save time by saying that I have not been searching. Another answer to that would be, well, we can look at those actually, we can look at search time conditional on searching some positive minutes. So basically exclude everybody who say, well, I have not been searching at all. And you still find a decline in search. And finally, it turns out that, and I think that's the most convincing evidence, uh, it turns out that some people have to not answer the survey every week. So you would think that people that answer the survey every week, they really learn how the survey works and therefore should be better able to kind of cheat the survey. Uh, so we can run the regression, uh, compare basically, so this, this, this here is a regression that runs time spent on job search, so job search intensity on unemployment duration. So we just see here this strong decline in search intensity. And then I run basically a horse race between that measure and number of interviews completed. So if, if it's really driven by how many interviews you have completed, then this should really be the main explanatory variable. If it's really driven by an employment duration, this should be the explanatory variable. And it turns out uh, this survives, the employment duration survives, so it's, it's, not, it's not just reporting bias. Reporting bias might explain some of these patterns, but not everything. The other question, so what else can we say? Uh, do we have any additional evidence? So in, t in connection with this time diary, we also connect, uh, collected some information on how people actually felt during specific episodes of the day. So we asked people, so they filled out a time diary, then we randomly selected three hours of the day and asked them, well, you know, you, between 7 a.m. and 7.59 a.m. we were doing some personal care, then how did you feel during that time? Happy, sad, stressed on a scale from zero to one. One meaning very intense feeling, zero meaning not at all. So this kind of can tell us something about how you know, emotional well-being during, speci during specific episodes uh, uh, evolves over the unemployment spell. Uh, most interestingly, or interestingly, if you look at different feelings during different episodes of the day, search is a very painful and pleasant activity. So by far the least happy, uh, the, the most sadness and the least uh, the most stress compared to any other acti activity. The most happy activity actually turns out to be socializing. Maybe not that surprising, but what's kind of surprising is still that unemployed workers actually don't spend so much time in socializing. They do spend a lot of time watching TV, which is actually doesn't turn to be out that pleasant. 
Now, can we say a little bit more? So I think trying to get this question of discouragement, and uh, that's really the heart of the paper, um, can we say something about how sadness or how these feelings evolve over the unemployment spell? Because this really, if, if people feel very stressed and, and unhappy and sad, that kind of suggests that there's a high emotional cost to job search. And we can look at, for example, how sadness evolves over the unemployment spell. So this is for all activities, not just job search, but for all activities. Turns out unemployed workers become more sad over the unemployment spell. That's maybe not so surprising. If you look at just sadness during specific epi during episodes where they were searching, sadness not only is, starts at a very high level, actually it even increases even more steeply. So this suggests that the emotional cost of search actually increase over the spell of unemployment. Maybe it's because no workers, they, they, get, uh, they get rejected, they don't, uh, they go that, don't get in invited uh, to interviews, and therefore they, they kind of get uh, discouraged. So this is the kind of evidence that we collected in this survey. And we also looked at the reservation wage. Um, the reservation wage seems to be fairly stable over the unemployment spell. Um, we actually, I'm, I'm working a little bit more on that, so that's kind of a work in progress. So let me just summarize. I think one, conclusions that we, one conclusion that we take from this survey is that, so actually it turns out most job search models, they predict that job search intensity should increase over the spell of unemployment. We find that search time seems to decline over the duration of unemployment. And our results are consistent with discouragement. And I also think that reporting bias by itself cannot explain everything. It might explain part of it, but not everything. And we have some additional evidence that suggests, you know, the emotional cost of search actually increasing over the spell of unemployment. So I think this really, uh, I think these are some really interesting results and tell us something about, you know, how this increase in unemployment duration actually might lead workers to uh, lose their courage in terms of they stop searching. And over time, they're probably also losing skills and might never really return to the labor market. Okay, thank you very much.